Looks like they're on their their last should be the rat last game. Then yep, it's only like turn three. what turn six right now. Yep, this does look to be their last game. Looks like they actually had some pretty long games. So it looks like Lee is playing Dune, okay. probably not the best hero in this current meta. Um, just actually, I don't know about that anymore. I would say. Before the nerf, I would say Cthulhu was pretty weak, but now due to the the nerfs to Quillibors, the linear scaling from the hero power is probably much more relevant. But he is at 20 health. Generally, this is the turn that Cthulhu start to stabilize, especially if they do miss the token start. Let me get a good look at the sport, and it does look like we did miss the token start, so I'm not super surprised right now. Yeah, he probably just want to play high tempo. He's gonna pick up the Murloc. Uh, question is, is he gonna? Oh, he's gonna go for it. So I think yeah. he buys the Quillboard here. It makes sense because it gives him another divine shield. Yeah, that or just yep. take the trouble right now. Looks like he's gonna buy. Gonna buy it. Buy the Banner Boar. I don't know. So do you? I like taking fives on Cthulhu. Being able to get Light Fang, being able to get Mithrax is so good on this hero. I, I, I just think, yeah, I think we just go for the five. Makes a lot of sense. The only problem with this play is that it's going to be awkward to uh, tear up. So you have to sell off one minion now on turn, next turn, to be able to uh, hero buy and hero power. He definitely does not want to miss a hero power, so he's likely going to sell off the banner board next turn. Trying to see the lobby that Lee is in to see what the standings are like here. Doing great out there. So it looks like Lee is pretty comfortably ahead in this. Not ahead, I'm sorry. He's in third place in the lobby so far behind Pocky and Never Lucky. Pocky and Never Lucky both being super high MMR players and Never Lucky. I mean Pocky being a being a streamer as well. Let's see so. So far, these hits have been pretty good for Lee. We do get the hit into the Divine Shield. It does look like we do win with a 3-drop and a 2-drop surviving, dealing 8 damage, bringing him down to 27. So, Cthulhu is interesting, right? Like, it's not, like, the most challenging hero in the game to play by any means, just due to the linear nature of the hero power. But I do think there's a lot of nuance to play the hero. He does take the 4, which I'm surprised about. I would almost... I, I, I wanted to go for... Well, I don't know. Would you have taken a 4 or a 5 here? Well, he saw the Bronze Warrior, and I, I think his thinking was, uh, since, since Bronze Warrior is such a good man to buff, it makes uh, the curve much more uh, uh, easier to go for. Because uh, if he went for a five, he had to sell off one man to the hero power. But now, now, yeah. now, uh, with taking a four, you can just fill up your board, buy a bronze warden, and also hero power without selling a man. Would you have done this play? Or would you have gotten to level? Would you have leveled? No, I think I think I like this play too. Bronze warden is a great man to take. So like okay. the, the main five that you want is like either Light Fang or like um, a Baron. Yeah. Uh, Mithrax is okay. Yeah, I guess so. Mithrax could be applicable, but uh, I think it's only two tribes. But yeah, I guess Mithrax that's true. Also. Yeah, I mean now we have three, but yeah, at the time that we would have gotten, it would have just been a two tribe Mithrax. There are no beasts in this lobby, so we can't do some cheeky, um, some cheeky macaw stuff. But I think for the most part, we could still get there. We do see that Reno has he hero powered? I can't tell. He did hero power the bristle the bristleback brute actually, which interesting. I don't know if I would have done that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess he does not. He was uh, playing very safe, and which makes sense. Look, uh, he's gonna lose here. So he just wanted to play safe, and potentially. Uh, Take a, t a top four instead, but unfortunately, he's got an eighth, not just not strong enough with it. Yeah, and this is the problem with Reno, right? Like, sometimes you're clinging on, you don't have a hero power, you're trying to do something, and you just pick something that can scale, and uh, it's just unfortunate. It's such a high roll hero. Sometimes you get the nuts, you get the turn six light fang with three tribes on board, and you're just like, take me to first. But sometimes you're in this position where the best thing you can hero power is a harbinger with just like a dragon and enforcer as your only taunt. Yeah, you just want a good moon now. Now, especially with Bonker being um, 
nerfed that the golden especially the golden now you can't get like uh eight potential uh blood gems max four now but reno had Every... lost a lot of uh high roll potential the very first day of the patch, I was uh, playing with Jeef, and he was like not playing because he wanted to preserve his ladder rank. And I uh, and I got Reno twice, and both games were just hard rolling. And I remember the very first time I saw it, I turned around, I went back to my computer, and I look at my hand, and I just have all these cards in my hand. I'm like, what the hell just happened? So, fun little story. I don't know why it, it was such a silly card. Like, when you golden it, it was so silly. Yeah, it was strange that how, how much I, I didn't understand why it was originally that much. Uh, it, like the regular regular version gives you uh, like two usually, but like golden one, why would it give eight? I think this makes a lot more sense giving a yeah. ma uh, max of four with uh, if it attacks only um, once or I guess four times max. Yeah, and I know one thing too. Um, I don't know about you, but. I, I think, like, this last patch was so good, right? Like, they got rid of the 3-5. I'm so happy. They got rid of that stupid card. Like, I don't think anyone liked it. I'm so happy. That yeah, happened. Baron Blacksmith was the card that he was talking about. It was a very unfun card because you can just um, just get it early. And then your opponent just can't deal with your, their board. And you take, like, 10, 10 plus damage because of that single card. We see the selfless pair, so we're probably picking this up. Probably, I, I think we just selfless hero power, right? Like, I don't really see what much else we could do here. Yeah, I probably just hold. Oh, he's oh, deciding he... to um, sell off the banner, banner brute, I guess. Sell oh, the razor. I mean, yeah. the uh, sun, sun relaxer. Oh, I see. That's why. Looks for the toxin, gets the toxin, probably putting it on the war leader. Sells it, probably plays the. Except for the other selfless, so selfless first. Would you have considered playing a man down here? Mm, probably not. My, your opponent has been winning, dealt 7 damage. I don't think you take the risk just to get more stats on your other mains. Well, I was saying just so we had a flex spot, because we, since we want to triple the selfless. That's true. Mm, but, like, the only reason to uh, for a flex spot is just to buff. So now, no, it's just like it sucks that if we get juggler, we have to hold in their hand, or maybe a tox spin, we have to hold in their hand. Yeah, but if he yeah. Want, really wants to play safe, we possibly could just sell like an enforcer, oh, or maybe in bronze. Red is huge. And it looks like, looks like he's he got a really good uh flat test type uh board. Gotta, gotta take advantage of flat test with those double uh, duels. Got two divine shield um, crowbars. Tough dust. Unfortunately, the fact. Wow, we actually we win. We tie. We tie. We tie. The fact that the that the selfless went on the other selfless is probably the worst case scenario. Um, we get the Argus, which I like a lot. I think we pick up the Argus and I think we roll and we could potentially start getting value out of this army. I mean, it is turn eleven, so it's probably too late. But it is something worth. Con it probably is something worth considering. No, I think you can. Toxin. I think you just take take it. Yeah, two divine shields technically. Top task and uh, bronze warning. You just give them both both taunt. Yeah. So let's see. We play the Argus on the divine shields. Right. Probably gonna play the jug two jug Argus. Yeah, but we don't have enough gold to buy the the arm. Oh, so he decides to go for arm uh, pair instead of buying the jug. So let's see. We're definitely looking to triple the selfless here. Unfortunately, the problem with this is now we, when the first selfless dies, it's a 50 50 to go on a poison, which I think is like that's uh, a risk. If, yeah, if you go first, it's only 50 50. You go first, yeah. Hopefully, it does not go on selfless once again. Poison, of course, is the best target. Either that or one of the taunts. Wow, I got a pretty insane two Razor Guards, but I don't think it's going to be enough to beat these poisons, but we'll see. Maybe it's just enough. 
He does have a lot of stats because so, they're value trading. Oh, man. Yeah. This has been pretty bad for us in terms of our selfless value. So Never Lucky is definitely happy to see how this has been playing out. We do take the value trades on the poison. So at least two other things are dying. At least three. We finally get... Oh my god, that was such a good hit. We get we kill the the Caligos with our arm. Oh, that was not a good hit. Unfortunately, like... Lee got really bad trades at the end. Could have potentially yeah. tied there, but and bad trades in the beginning too. Yeah, yeah, the just the Southwest felt like he was very favored that round, but not. Are we really looking to triple the Selfless? Like, I, I, it's, this is why I don't. Oh, there it is. Let's see. Oh, interesting. So we do have the brand. If we want to do some greedy scaling, we don't really have an engine for the thorn curse. But I, I, I don't know. We have three tribes for thorn curse. We don't really have a gem generator. We pick up the brand. We see the primal fin, but we already have two poison marks. Maybe the arm can go, and we try to find another poison. Yeah, looks like it. I go fast. Got There's the... cold light. There's cold light. Definitely not poison card. So that's we're sad. Probably buy the. E. We we sell the brand. Okay. I don't know if I would have sold brand here. I don't really think getting the bronze warden is really good. I guess it's actually pretty good because what happens is it's another it's a one less target for our selfless to hit. So I guess in that regard, it's pretty strong. Mm, the brown wasn't That's... doing a whole ton. Um, so spare. Uh, cause if you if you want to keep the brown, you have to sell up arm next turn. Yeah. All right, let's see what's in the box. Probably not enough, but maybe. They're value trading, so this boat could potentially. Uh... No, I don't that think is that's enough. not Eliza. And now the question is, is Miyako dead? We've got two, four, four plus six, ten, ten plus four is fourteen, so there's no way he's ever dead here. Looks like two pe one person was eliminated, Elise was eliminated, so Jonah Kak on the test is gone. Um, we do see, I mean, uh, sorry. Run free on the Elise is gone. We don't really see much in the shop here. Potentially just buying the Gambler just, just in case. Um, but I don't really know how we're getting super strong here. We're definitely playing a pretty... I mean, granted, it is Cthulhu, so we just press the hero power and we get stronger. Um, I think it's going to start tearing up to find a Baron at this point. There but... is the Primal Fin and the Murazon. What did Murazon... Murazon couldn't do much for us, so I think we just skip it. I, uh, it's so we can't buy anything. There's the Baron. I think we just freeze zero power. Like, do we really need it this turn? I guess it's better than the arm. No, uh, he doesn't want to miss a hero power, so this makes sense. You yeah. also buy a blood gem too for next turn, so because he needs another blood gem for a tough tusk. Yeah. So let's think. Baron is taking up one of these slots before the taunts, and I think the other slot has to be a poison. So I think at this point, we're just looking to find another poison. Maybe even a spore would be fine. Not ideal, but it's fine. So probably looking to find just another poison and put this Baron down and keep generating blood gems to keep our Tough Tusk buffed up. So we come in, we get our double dimensional. It does not hit the best targets, but you know, it's it's whatever. I don't think it's gonna matter too much. Cold light, cold fin seer does hit into the divine shield, so nothing really happens. Takes a value trade on the flat tusk. Loses the divine shield on one of his tough tusks. His board is pretty much dead at this point. We have two poisons. There really isn't a way for him to come back from this. He is not dead as he is at 20 health. He does take 13, goes to seven. So this bear is going to be in play this turn most likely, uh, and he needs to play that um, that uh, razor fin. We need another blood gem for the tough tusk. He sees another poison, so he might pick that up and just keep it in his hand. 
likely going to sell off um, either arm or bronze sword, and I don't know how greedy he wants to be with the arm, but I could definitely see arm is still in the in play. I I honestly don't even mind keeping the arm, not not even buying the tox spin this turn, just like. Selling the selling the the six five bronze ward in, playing the geomancer, getting the token, hero powering. What does that does that work out right? So we sell through. We're at five. We buy the tox, and we can play the baron and hero power. I think it works out that way. That's the play I would probably do here, but I'm also not Lee, um, and he is very very good. So I'm curious to see what he's gonna do. The only problem with Toxpin is that if if you play the baron, you can't play the poison. It's really tough. Uh, so I think he's deciding not to uh, go for it and maybe just gonna hear yeah. power. No, 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 he's gonna play. He's gonna buy a blood gem instead. Keep one in hand. Play the Baron. Hero power. Keep the bronze. Looks like you would rather keep the pair. It, it makes sense. It's also would, a divine shield. You... This what? is interesting. So actually, this is super high level. He's using the baron as a cleave blocker because he doesn't okay so he, he does swap it out i actually think it, it could go work both ways because that the dragon the seven six on its own has a divine shield there's no chance of uh, i don't think there's any getting... cleave is there no mechs and beasts are banned so there's no possibility oh, of cleave. you're right you're right the only and elementals so literally no possible way does look like never lucky is dead here we do have significant damage coming from lee pretty standard gameplay i would say from this C'Thun. i mean there's definitely been a lot of lines where i think i would have done something differently but i think lee is really showcasing how good he is by being able to pilot a hero that's generally pretty autopilot into a pretty like strong presence like the various decisions he makes like yeah it seems obvious like you buy poisons you buy Baron, you buy Selfless, but getting to that point so efficiently, I think, is is what makes this is really what makes this hero difficult. Watch is gonna pick up Toxpin now. Only problem with Toxpin is you do need to triple that Bronze Worm to be able to fit in fit in, or either that or find a second Baron. Looks like he's gonna pass it up again. The question is Pocky's gonna. On... Pocky's on Pirates three losing. So what could he be on? Scam. I'm not sure. Like, how do you lose a scam comp? Unless everyone is, like, void lording him. But yeah, as you were saying, uh, it's so awkward. We do need to triple this bronze ward in, right? Like, it's the only way we're getting two board spaces free. Let's see what he has. Janus has been losing, so. I don't know if we'll be strong enough to beat Cthulhu. see what happens here so he is playing the scam comp but this is interesting he's got the selfless that's a pretty interesting tech i actually like it a lot I would, that's definitely not something i would ever consider but it, it makes so much sense if you're like looking for something to end on have the golden chadgar but it is the 50 50 so there's the stats just aren't there for our scam comp hockey yeah the i don't know if it's enough it's a regular regular baron regular lies of a golden of kagar yeah definitely need a second eliza and i think we'd be pretty comfortably with like pocky be pretty comfortably winning all of these but this is pretty close to a 50 50 definitely not the hit he's looking to get because now the full divine shield happens but granted, I actually don't know if there was any other option. So it does look like Pocky is down for the count here. Valiant run, always a big fan of scam comp, but when you're at one, you lose, you die. Dude. Question is now, now you're kind of required a, a blood gem, but oh, we found oh, a bronze ward in triple. Found a bronze ward in triple. I'm a big fan of this. Oh, he just slams it. 
He can buy uh, Charga because he does need another Blood Gem, which makes a lot of sense. The Charlie is pretty good. The Nadina is probably not good enough. Uh, Would you ever Argus your uh, life, your selfless hero? He could if he wants to play safe. Uh, he could uh, his opponent could potentially put like a, a low attack taunt, so probably the safest line by uh, taunting it up. Don't want to face like a some, someone potentially putting like a low attack like a athlete just to counter that selfless. So this makes a lot of sense. But you also have a similar comp You're going for poisons, divine shields. Very similar. But the question is enough. Who will win? Yeah. Getting a pretty good hit. Uh, oh, another good hit. Uh, that's not so good. That's. Good. To the scores. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, lead. I did not get the he good hit. Down to res. It was a very close match. It but was indeed. But well played by Lee. We got to see that from the very beginning. And really, really, what I want to highlight is how well he piloted that on Cthulhu without the token, like. That that is not an easy thing to do. I know so many people just see no token bottom right.